I can do this all day. 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 Yeah, I know. Guns don't kill people. Captain America kills people. It's up. That's right, folks. America's ass isn't all slow dances and PSAs. What would Captain America do? He's got red on his ledger, and we've got the comic book pages to prove it. Maybe that's why Black Widow was so into him for a hot minute. Was that your first kiss since 1945? That bad, huh? Captain America Comics number no. 3 was a graphically very violent and extremely odd comic. In the queer case of the murdering butterfly and the ancient mummies, a violent criminal was robbing a museum night after night, sending its guards to the morgue. Cap investigates, and the armed robber turns out to be the museum director who dresses as a giant butterfly at night to commit the robberies. Which reminds us of the Family Guy episode The Fat Guy Strangler when Peter has Brian dress up with him in a two-person horse costume so he he can lie to Lois and tell her he's going to get a physical instead of stakes with the guys. What, what the hell, I'll just ask it. Why do we need the horse suit for that? I mean, why not just wear a ski mask like a normal burglar? Anyway, the butterfly uses the simple Lenny as his muscle, reminiscent of the Lenny from my seventh grade book report on Of Mice and Men. And, and I get to tend the rabbits. Yeah, you get to tend the rabbits. As he is as strong as a horse, it has the IQ of one as well. It did not work. Yeah. In combat with the poor block-headed behemoth, Steve Rogers sends Lenny to the heaven where he can tend his rabbits by throwing a dinosaur bone through him. Yikes. He also snuffs the butterfly and evades the police. This Cap's a bad boy. Maybe not technically Captain America, as it wasn't Steve Rogers, but definitely worth mentioning. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier's John Walker got severe tunnel vision when Carly Morgenthau iced his bestie Battlestar. Vengeance is mine, saith the captain as he chased down the slowest of the runaway flag smashers and took the low road in avenging his brother-in-arms Battlestar. He desecrated the shield in front of the general public, a public relations faux pas Steve Rogers would never have done. Captain America 254 reveals that John Walker wasn't the first Cap to decapitate someone with a vibranium shield. It's Blade. It's the Daywalker. Instead of calling Blade, Union Jack calls upon Steve Rogers to murder his own brother who has become a vampire. One of Dracula's undead minions, Baron Blood met the wrath of Steve Rogers' shield. Although he was just doing his job, Cap was crushed under the weight of what he'd done, and in front of Baron Blood's immediate family, no less. Imagine the therapy. For 50 Cent in 1980, you could have bought Captain America number 249, where Cap fought Machine Smith, a strange enemy with unique motivation. He had lived too long, seen too much, and knew too much. That drove him to cynicism, which drove him to madness and sadness, which led him to a death wish. Machine Smith needed assistance to end his own personal psychodrama, as ending your own life was against his programming. Suicide Squad is that since Suicide Squad is DC and therefore impossible to reach from the Marvel world, and probably don't do the kind of work their name suggests, Machine Smith got Cap to unwittingly be the accomplice in his own murder. He destroyed Machine Smith's earthly body, thinking he was going to trap him in some kind of digital purgatory where cyberpunk's Johnny Silverhand lives, but no, he sent him to the great beyond, where Soul's Joe Gardner is. 1977's The Invaders number 21. We learn that Steve Rogers hates guns. He hates them so much he has to use them all the time just to remember how much he hates them. Sometimes, Cap is like a smoker who is constantly saying he hates cigarettes and is going to quit, but you always catch him with a ciggy in his mouth and he's like, it's my first and last one, man. He shoots a bunch of planes out of the sky with a machine gun. Just remember, he didn't like it. 2005's Captain America comic relaunch saw a cap that would only break the fifth commandment if he had to. And from the very first issue, you guessed it, a situation came up and, oh yeah, he had to. A group of terrorists hell-bent on blowing up Coney Island get interrupted by the man out of time. And when one of them fires at him from a chopper, Cap takes the whirly bird out of the sky and sends the gunner and pilot to meet their ancestors. He's not the only major superhero to make spirits out of his enemies. Remember what Batsy did to Ra's al Ghul at the end of Batman Begins? I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. Bro, that is such a technicality that's not even funny. If Joker only knew. You won't kill me. 
I'm your best friend. Captain America number 113 showed the brilliant but cold and calculating side to America's golden boy. In the story Captain America lives, Cap fills his motorcycle with some extra super flammable gas. He parks it near some Hydra soldiers and gets Rick Jones to shoot it, making his enemies go boom. Well, let's just say Frank Castle will be very proud of him. On one of Cap and Bucky's first adventures as a warfighting duo, they start off in a more innocent battle, punching and kicking German soldiers and tying them up. The next, they're loading a raft with more explosives than Wile E. Coyote and send it into an enemy warship. The sound is a symphony to Bucky's ears. In this version of Grandpa Frisbee's mythology, it's Steve Rogers that gives Bucky his taste for blood, perhaps turning him into the Terminator he later becomes. In Captain America Comics number 1, the star-spangled man with a plan doesn't waste a second in bursting his murder cherry. Right after being turned into a super soldier and getting his beefcake body, a spy screaming death to democracy shoots the freshly monikered Captain America scientist, making the making of more super soldiers impossible. Steve Rogers, the first and last of his breed, exacts revenge in a heartbeat, not hesitating to throw the skunk into some surging electrical equipment, turning the spy into ash. He's real self-righteous about this one. In Captain America number 321, Steve takes on Flag Smasher and his gang Ultimatum, which stands for Underground Liberated Totally Integrated Mobile Army to Unite Mankind. Yeah, that name's way too long. Ultimatum jacked a U.S. passenger plane and took the hostages to Switzerland. Cap infiltrates the hostage holding area disguised as a guard and holding a machine gun. When Captain America finds himself face to face with a member of Ultimatum and gives him an ultimatum to stand down or get a lead salad, he ends up having to use the business end of the firearm to save the civilians, proving that yes, he can trade lives, but at great personal cost. Later on, he says this was his first time taking a life. But we're like, bro, didn't you fight in one of like the most bloodiest wars humankind has ever seen? In The Adventures of Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty number 3, Cap and Bucky go hunting for the guys you do not see coming. He bombs some goose steppers with some fire in the hole. After the death of one of his colonels, he pulls a John Walker and goes on a rampage shooting a bunch of the Red Skull's army with a revolver. I mean, I've been shooting these kind of guys since Wolfenstein 3D on diskette, but some of us do hold Captain America to an almost impossibly high moral standard. War isn't for the squeamish, and maybe some of us can't handle the truth. And the truth is, Steve Rogers will pop a cap in your you-know-what if you cross his Uncle Sam. Post 9-11-2001 came out with a new Captain America comic where Steve has to protect G.W. Bush's shaken up America. He sure saves his anger for the enemy in the enemy story arc. Like Gustavo Leon said in 2003's A Man Apart, to bring down a monster, you must become a monster. Cap declares war on Al Tariq and his shepherds. After a nasty battle, Cap sends Al Tariq to his grave. After doing the deed, Cap says to the media that America did not kill Al Tariq, I did taking off his cowl in a reveal so dramatic, we'll bet the MCU's Tony Stark was green with envy. In Captain America's number 616 short story, Opaque Shadows, Cap has a tryst with a widowed artist, Jenny. She paints his shield and serves him coffee. Oh, the good life. When her hubby Mike returns, seemingly back from the dead, it turns out he's a spy for the Axis of Evil. Cap gives him the hard goodbye with the old shield to the chopper. After saving Jenny and posing with her for a painting, Cap leaves her. Oh my, this dude was a bit of a player pre-Peggy. Hey, come to think of it, Steve unwittingly made out with the power broker in Civil War. Ooh, if that comes out, will Cap get cancelled? Avengers Endless Wartime is a graphic novel that addresses Captain America's history as a soldado. Beyond the pep rallies, this super soldier was bred to be an instrument of destruction for the Allies. Being part of the greatest generation comes with a great price. Like when Mr. Rogers bangs on the lowest keys of a grand piano, or when Steve Rogers punches a heavy bag across the room, these men have a rage that burns under their skin and in their souls. Wolverine knows about Cap's darker side and calls him on it. Blondie Stevie tries to play high and mighty with his fellow war vet, telling him, Logan, I respect you, but don't tell me I'm like you. Wolvie replies, not a killer you mean? You were in World War II. Don't tell me you didn't kill anybody.
The MCU's Captain America does a lot for his squad, like he doesn't trade lives, unless those lives are the lives of civilians. In Age of Ultron, we saw an obscene amount of collateral damage done to Sokovia, the nation that the Avengers used as a battlefield. Cap's attitude post-battle of Ultron was like, hey, cost of doing business. The cost of civilian life and infrastructure damage didn't weigh as heavily as it did on Tony Stark, sparking a great divide and a civil war amongst the Avengers. Steve refused to sign the Sokovia Accords, because that would mean he'd have to stop superheroing and do something else. I'm not looking for forgiveness, and I'm way past asking. Cap's actions towards the Avengers' wrecking of Sokovia reminds me of the Family Guy episode Brian Goes to College when Peter, Joe, Cleveland, and Quagmire join forces to create the A-Team and save a cat from a tree. To get the cat back on the ground, they shoot the tree down, decimating it, and in turn, destroy the property. No need to thank us, it's what we do. That's enough. After making this list and reading all these comics, I feel that the MCU's John Walker may not be all that dissimilar from Steve Rogers. Just one wore the suit a little bit better and had much better PR skills. Let's see if Sam Wilson gets tempted to snuff out a few villains for God and Country. 